the eclipse. They'll operate normally until they reach an area over southeast Missouri. So that's when, as we saw in the simulator there, the captains will plan to bank the plane 30 degrees once on each side to give passengers a view of the eclipse. And they'll have four minutes of total eclipse time in order to do that. Traveling at about 400 miles per hour. So the sun is actually going to be catching up to us. So we're taking off before it even hits the U.S. border on the south end, and it will catch up to us. Well, back in 2017, we had our first alert for crew on a similar southwest flight. They flew from Denver to St. Louis. Flight 1577 touched down just before totality. Airport flights were on, and passengers watched from the windows. I remember that. And the flight crew stepped outside to watch. And back then, the captain even let our Chris Nagus watch from the cockpit. That was a really cool experience. That is a pretty cool way to watch it. All right, well, before the break, how about some more Eclipse fun facts? This one, the path of totality will be about 10,000 miles long, less than half of which actually occurs on land. Totality will last on land for a total of 100 minutes, however. It's pretty cool. Back to a live look of the sky. This is from Durango, Mexico. Oh, Junction, Texas, it looks like, uh, from our bottom left-hand side of the screen under the graphic. So, yeah, we're going to continue, uh, continue to look at these NASA live looks, bringing us, as we move toward totality, we just saw that uh, down in Mexico yeah. totality that was northeast of Mexico City. In Mexico. We're kind of at the mercy of NASA here with these sure. different looks as they're moving their own camera system around to be able to give us different views of the eclipse as it moves across. But pretty cool that we're able to see that from Junction, Texas. We know Texas one of the first spots to see that totality. We'll be right back. Feels good to be home. This weekend only, don't miss Ashley's 72 hour sale. Get 30% off your first item plus 20% off the rest of your purchase. Or get 0% interest for five years. Shop now, spend less, and get more. Only at Ashley. I was having a lot of sinus infections. My sinuses were clogged, pressure, headaches. Linda suffered for years with chronic sinus infections. Now, her issues are gone. How? A minimally invasive procedure done in the office of St. Louis Sinus Center called Balloon Sinuplasty. I would do it again in a heartbeat and I would definitely recommend it for someone else. Do you suffer with chronic sinus infections? Set an appointment today with St. Louis Sinus Center. You know him as the man with the plan for retirement. Rishi Ghosh is back for the all-new Wheelhouse Retirement Show, Saturday nights at 6.30 and Sunday nights at 11. Join him and Anthony Stryker from Wheelhouse Advisory Group for a look at what it takes to plan for a modern-day retirement. Income, taxes, health care, and estate planning. The Wheelhouse Retirement Show tackles your biggest retirement questions. Join Rishi Ghosh and Anthony Stryker for the all-new Wheelhouse Retirement Show, Saturday nights at 6.30 and Sunday nights at 11. Are you in need of reliable home services you can trust both on and off the field? Hoffman Brothers has you covered. As the official home services partner of St. Louis City SC, we provide top tier solutions for heating, air conditioning, electrical, plumbing, and appliances. We will bring a highlight reel performance to your home every time and provide you with options so you can choose what's best for your family. Score big and reach out to Hoffman Brothers today to discover why we're the trusted choice for home services in St. Louis. This career isn't easy. But nothing worth doing ever is. Being one of us requires heart, drive, and unmatched dedication. Dedicate your life to something that matters. Feels good to be home. This weekend only, don't miss Ashley's 72-hour sale. Get 30% off your first item plus 20% off the rest of your purchase. Or get 0% interest for five years. Shop now, spend less, and get more. Only at Ashley. In the United States, here is where we are right now with the 2024 eclipse. This is a live look from Junction, Texas. We just looked at this two minutes ago before we yes. went to the break. And I'm not sure because we don't even see the kind of surround right, from the, 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 of the sun. So 
anyway, we'll, we'll keep watching this uh, live look from NASA. <laughs> Let's see where that goes. All right. But we do want you to know that if there's the only time that you can take your glasses off to safely view the eclipse is if you are in that path of totality. The map you see here on your screen, if you are not in that little black line that goes all the way across the country, important here, you are not in totality at any point. And one thing you need to remember is the proper eyewear. And no, your sunglasses will not cut it for this. You need glasses like the ones right here. And if you're looking at your glasses, you want to make sure that they have the ISO seal right on the inside. No matter where you are, you're going to need to use your eclipse glasses during the entire duration of the partial eclipse. Experts say you can only take them off if you are in totality, as Sam just said, and the sun is 100% covered. But even then, it's only recommended you look for seconds at a time. We talked with Dr. Greg Birdie with Ophthalmology Associates about the risk. You don't really notice it for a while until the, the nerves of the retina, which are dying and get destroyed by the sun, don't see anymore. And, and the defect is smack dab in the middle of your vision. So it's like taking a finger and sticking it in front of your eye, trying to look through it and, and, and missing the middle part. And that happens within the initially, right when it occurs, and you're looking, but it's noticeable usually several hours to days later. It's non-repairable. And this is also really important. Dr. Birdie says if you think watching the eclipse through your phone camera will protect you, you would be wrong about that. The lenses on your camera can actually magnify the damage. All right, we want to get back to our live crews all across the bi-state. Yeah, Nathan Vickers joins us now from Chester, Illinois, home of Popeye. And today it is the home of Nathan Vickers and the total eclipse. How are you, Nathan? <laughs> Hey, hey, how's it going from Chester, Illinois? You know, this is also the home today of some really nice equipment. We've seen a lot of cameras like this with some long zoom lenses. And you were talking about safety just a minute ago. We have uh, safety for, for our cameras here and for my camera. You can get these little solar filters that will just pop on the front of your lens, and then that will allow you to shoot safely at the sky. But a lot of people are just kind of enjoying themselves, enjoying the calm before the storm. We have people uh, blowing bubbles around here. We've, I've seen some people with colanders moving around that kind of capture those unique shadows. But there's a gentleman around the corner that's here on an educational mission too. He's got a giant telescope that he's sharing with a lot of people as they watch very closely. This is Dino Milani from the popular Astronomy Club in Rockport, Illinois. He's on that educational mission with those big telescopes for anyone to come and take a look through. He's giving out free eclipse glasses too. But he has another personal mission. During the last eclipse, his camera was just a little bit off. He says he left the lens cap on. So this time around, he's determined to nail that perfect shot. People have really enjoyed looking through those big scopes at the sun, too. People look for the first time sometimes through a telescope, and they see things they've never seen before. And explain it to them as well, it's, it's even better. And I'm trying to nail my perfect shot just a little bit too. I'm going to put my glasses on uh, uh, to look at the sun again because I'm just a little bit out of position. But we've got cameras on up here as well. And if you'll check back in with us here in just a little bit, we'll get an even better view from Chester, Illinois. And notice that filter that Nathan has there on his camera. Really important there. All right. Nathan, thank you. Today, as we just saw, a big day for the scientific community. A lot of people really excited about it. Students, too, in St. Louis, in fact, have been running drills for the experiment that they're going to be conducting today. Our David Emilotti spoke to them as they were getting ready. So far, so good. An early morning experiment in below freezing temperatures. Yeah, I think we need to... Uh, lower? Yeah, go lower. To f oh. Well, that cut out quickly, didn't it? Local businesses got in on the Eclipse hype. Several area breweries brewed up some Eclipse-themed beer, something that I think we could all probably enjoy today, including two shift breweries on the hill. Shadow of the Moon was months in the making. They had it on their draft in their tasting room, as well as four packs that were coupled with NASA-approved glasses. We asked what made this batch so special. It's an IPA, which tends to be my favorite, which is a nice balance of like a bitter, hoppy, fruit forward balanced beer, um, but we actually add a little bit of malt to it, which gives it a black roastiness to it. So um, it's just a, a fun, uh, visually different type of beer. Good looking brews there from Second Shift. The Shadow of the Moon beer was just sold yes, sold out yesterday, just sold through yesterday, but we're told the brewery got calls every day leading up to today asking if it was still available. Still pretty popular. Absolutely. A live look at Mount Vernon right now. This is where 
Our Justin Andrews is now. Justin, we're going to bring up your mic to talk about what you're seeing out there. Yeah, Sam and Corey, do you see this? We're seeing that partial eclipse here in Mount Vernon. And this is just something we've been noticing over the last five or 10 minutes or so. Uh, we actually have two cameras able to give you this view here of what we're seeing right now. It's about, what, 1.21 in the afternoon. We're seeing that partial eclipse. We've actually had a couple kids come up and view our cameras here to see this site. And it's certain something that they really just smile about. It's not just kids. We're talking about adults, too. My photographer, uh, Brian Podner, and I, we saw this. We pulled up on our camera, and we're like, whoa, look at this. So it's certainly a sight to see. And this is why 15,000 people are uh, here in Cedarhurst uh, at the Arts Center here in Mount Vernon to see exactly what you're seeing right now on the air, this partial eclipse. We're not expected to see that totality here in Mount Vernon until about 2 o'clock. So we're going to um, try to give you a live shot around that time, too. But this is what we're seeing right now in Mount Vernon as this partial eclipse is happening here and a lot of people are seeing it. And in fact, partner, am I crazy? Is the temperature, you know, a little dropping a little bit? Yeah, we're feeling the temperature dropping and that's because the lighting is too, obviously, because of this eclipse. So Sam Corey, we're going to be out here giving you the sights and sounds pretty much all day, but we wanted to break in and give you this view of what we're seeing right now of this partial eclipse here in Mount Vernon. Back over to you guys. A great sight, yeah. Justin. You know, the amazement of today has us all feeling like kids, right? It does. Little, Seriously, little. it really does. <laughs> I don't know how emotional I'm going to get. I can feel it coming. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Well, before we head to break, another eclipse fact. This eclipse is expected to be one of the most watched live natural events in history. During the total solar eclipse of 2017, the path of totality passed over 12 million people. Well, this time, it is passing over 32 million people. We'll be right back. Right now, for a limited time, get free next day curbside delivery on all in stock furniture and mattresses. And Kloss Furniture brings you the guaranteed lowest prices every single day. At Kloss Furniture, we have something for everybody. Lizard King, didn't you have a complicated claim recently? Oh, I had Buddy and Bird here do an old fashioned stakeout. There she is. Got you now, you old bird. Not you, the old lady. Let's see if she's really hurt. Look at that. Perfectly healthy. It's like yoga to me. So you use that picture to strong armor into a lowball settlement? I love it. Up top. Call under law at 314 or 618 9 million. If your roof is old, leaky, or damaged, you need Happy Roof. Our local pros get the job done in no time flat. Our A plus BBB rating means you will love our work. Happy Roof specializes in gutters, siding, and energy smart roofing, which will save you money on your electric bills. We offer a 10 year labor warranty on all shingle roofs and have happy customers across the greater St. Louis area. For your free estimate, visit thehappyroof.com. Bet you didn't see that. Or that. But if you were an Atlas with front assist and could detect things in 0.02 seconds, you'd see every scene hidden in this commercial. Let's slow it down and see. Huh, it's a man walking his dogs and a woman walking her dinosaurs? 0.02 seconds. It's quicker than the blink of an eye. The Atlas with front assist. Hop in. It's a VW. Get 1.9% APR financing or a $3,000 customer bonus on a new 2024 Atlas or Atlas Cross Sport during the Volkswagen 75th anniversary event. This is me, and this was my stubborn body fat. My name is Adrian, and Sonobello, America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist, permanently removed my body fat in just one visit. Sonobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently. My tummy is is gone, my double chin is gone, and my hourglass shape is back. Don't wait. Call or go to sonobello.com now. Right now, for a limited time, get free next day curbside delivery on all in stock furniture and mattresses. And Kloss Furniture brings you the guaranteed lowest prices every single day. At Kloss Furniture, we have something for everybody. This is the Great American Eclipse, sponsored by St. Luke's Urgent Care and Ophthalmology Associates. 
It is at the crossroads of the 2017 and 2024 eclipse. X marks the spot quite literally. They're also there in Carbondale, Illinois, expecting more than four and a half minutes of totality. And that is where we find First Alert 4 meteorologist Matt Chambers joining us live. Matt, you were in this spot for the 2017 eclipse. Talk over what we're seeing there in Carbondale now. Well, first thing I will say is that sky conditions are a huge improvement today over 2017 when we had some stubborn low and mid-level cloud cover. We've got just a couple of high thin clouds around right now and guys what you're seeing is partial eclipse here in Carbondale, Illinois from the vantage point of inside Saluki Stadium where we're joined with almost 13,000 people continuing to closely monitor this moon as it moves in front of the sun. So as you look at it, the lower right hand portion of the sun disk is now covered by the moon and within hold on let me check my watch about 30 minutes from now 33 minutes from now to be precise we will enter complete totality here in the city of Carbondale that'll last for about four minutes and two seconds and check it out gray dog from the Salukis here in Carbondale has joined me gray dog agree or disagree it is noticeably cooler than it was 20 minutes ago yep also, it's noticeably darker than it was about 20 minutes ago. Yeah, guys, I mean, there's a real atmospheric difference that is detectable. I would say we've dropped maybe five to 10 degrees since the last time we spoke to you, which was less than 30 minutes ago. And I don't know if you can get this watching from your living rooms, but the level of light is a lot lower now. It has kind of a early dusk or maybe sort of partly cloudy in the late afternoon feel and that is going to change dramatically obviously as we get closer to the point of totality you know one of the things that Kent and David have been talking about at St. Louis Science Center is there is a marked difference between 99.8 percent totality and 100 percent totality which my buddy Gray Dog and I will enjoy here for four minutes and nine seconds coming up at about 159 can't wait guys can't wait should be really exciting Yes, it will. Matt there in Carbondale along with the Saluki. Thank you very much. Well, here is our team that is stationed across the area. All but one of these crews is in the path of totality as we near the big moment about 30 minutes away right now from totality in Poplar Bluff. And that's where we want to find our, our Caroline Hecker with, uh, with us this afternoon. How's it been out there, Caroline? We agree with kind of what Matt was saying is it's not necessarily gotten darker here, but the light, the hue certainly feels like it's changed. People are filing into the Poplar Bluff High School football stadium. I'm joined by Becky. She made the long trip from Pennsylvania. So tell us how you ended up getting here to Poplar Bluff. For about a year, we had been planning to go to Texas, but then around Tuesday or Wednesday, we noticed the weather was turning. So we canceled all those plans and just made a beeline for St. Louis and then followed the clear sky here. Weather has been great so far. Amazing. You said you saw it in 2017. Yes. So what are you looking forward to this time around again? Uh, this time my mother is with us. She hasn't seen a full eclipse since she was a child. So we're very excited to share this with her. And if you had a chance to look up with your glasses, we're in that partial eclipse. What do you think so far? We have. It's beautiful. Every time it takes my breath away. Thank you so much, Becky. We appreciate it. Thank you for coming to Missouri all the way from Pennsylvania. How exciting. We've heard that from a lot of people. A lot of people were going to go to Texas originally. They decided because of the weather forecast to come here and really it hasn't disappointed. It's warm. It's sunny. And guys, we are really looking forward to the next half hour or so when we enter that total solar eclipse. We're live in Poplar Bluff this afternoon. Caroline Hecker, First Alert 4. Hey, we'll be here before we know it. We'll check back in here soon with you, Caroline. Thank you. We also know thousands are expected to be in St. Francis County to today for that total eclipse. Russell Kinsall in Farmington for us today. Russell, how are the crowds dealing with uh, the eclipse there? Russell having some issues with his mic there, but he wants to show us his farm. There we go. Shirt. There I we go. I'll fill it in for you. Now. Can you hear me now? <laughs> so it always it always works better when you turn the microphone on, but I turned it off to save the battery, so that's my excuse. Uh, so everybody very excited here about Total Eclipse. If anybody has any doubt about when it starts, I'm wearing a shirt to remind the crowd exactly when the Total Eclipse begins. But the partial eclipse is underway. Let's put the lens on the camera and then point the camera up toward the sun, and we're going to show you. We're probably halfway through the partial eclipse, halfway to that totality, the daylight darkness. Uh, it is just so cool that there are a lot of people who are taking occasional glances up at the sun and you can tell that it is getting darker here in Farmington. Anybody who experienced the total eclipse in 2017, 
just did not want to miss it again. So we talked to somebody who said they definitely made a point to be here and see it again. In 2017, the last eclipse, I was actually uh, on the beach on the Mississippi River with a bunch of folks watching it out there. And it was pretty surreal that it got dark and all the birds and all the animals started making noises and stuff. So uh, just a neat experience. So take a look at this. This is one of the things you see during a partial eclipse. As the sun comes through the leaves, can you see these little crescent shapes right here? You can see the moon coming across the sun and you see these crescent shapes, which is the partial eclipse. That's one of the things that's happening. And we don't have very many trees out here. This is the only tree in the general area. So this tree is giving us the sense without even looking up at the sun that there's a partial eclipse going on here. Just one of those cool things that you experience during an eclipse. But that total eclipse, that's what we're all waiting for. That surreal, almost mystical moment that's coming up very soon here in Farmington. Back to you guys. A little science with Russell Kinsaw. <laughs> I like it. Russell, thank you. Well, just about 15 miles from Farmington is French Village, Missouri. Yeah, it's another festival of that happening there as well as people are getting ready for this eclipse. We've covered a lot of these as these towns in the path of totality are hosting these big events for people wanting to come see it. And this is another reason why they're there. Steve Harris in French Village for us to talk us through the partial eclipse that they're seeing there. Steve. Oh, yeah, see that? That's what I'm seeing in my glasses right now, what you're seeing. Yeah, it's kind of getting hazy here, but bear with us while we pull the filter from the camera and take it off the tripod so I can talk to some people. If you'd been here a little bit ago, it was, this, uh, uh, it was like a bagpipes and a drummer, and it went by, and like the Pied Piper of Hamlin, people were following. Those are great. I got some. Those are awesome. Just that. I found some people that came a long ways from here. So, hey, where do you guys come from? Virginia. Virginia. What did you come for the festival, the Eclipse, or both? Uh, oh, we'll never know. <laughs> I got a feeling it's both. We'll the, come back to Yeah, that. exactly. All right, well, we'll see peak darkness in St. Louis at around 2 p.m. And the experts at the St. Louis Science Center are ready for all of it. They've spent weeks preparing. Here's a better look at where the St. Louis Science Center is in relation to that path of totality. Just about 99% of the sun will be covered, but that is where First Alert Meteorologist Kent Earhart and our David Amelotti are stationed for us today for this eclipse of 2024. How is it, guys? It's great. I mean, I just looked up. I'd say we're like halfway there right now. That's what it looks like to me, and uh, it's a beautiful sight. When you think about it, the longer you sit here and you think about what you're looking at, that's when it really starts to hit you and settle in. Uh, the thing, one of the things that David and I have been talking about the past couple of weeks in, in, uh, as we worked up to this is just how amazing it is that we're able to, with the precision of telling us how much we'll be able to see and where and exactly what time. Now, well, that to me, I, I did a little research on that, and it seems like it goes back to like the Babylonian era where, you, where they were they were good at taking uh, records of when things happen and then started to recognize patterns. Yeah, pattern recognition is huge on that and being able to see if there's patterns in, in how these things develop. And then as you go forward, you take those patterns and those observations and you make theories based on it. And I think it was uh, Johannes Kepler that came up with the law of planetary motion. So he's talking about elliptical motion of the orbits of the planets in our solar system. And it was all part of heliocentrism. So we knew that we weren't the center of the universe anymore. Yeah. And all these things put together, we start to be able to predict further and further out with greater and greater accuracy where things will be and when they will happen. Yeah, let's go in Bonus there. points for the Kepler reference, by the way. <laughs> that was impressive. And, you know, we talked about it before how one spot on the, on the face of the planet, one in 330 years, can get that total solar eclipse. So when we go to Matt and, 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 and when he's in Carbondale, the fact that they get two total solar eclipses yeah. in a span of seven years yeah. is a statistical fluke. But how much more have we learned? Because now, today, we know that we can predict an eclipse happening in, in 2,000 years. We've just learned so much more about you know, the distance from us to the sun, right? Yeah, you know, it's actually a freak anomaly that we even have eclipses. It's because of the tilt of the moon's orbit mm -hmm. as we have an axial tilt going through and the fact that the sun, if I remember correctly, is about 400 times the distance uh, from us as the size of the moon. Mm -hmm. we, so they look about the same size in the right. sky, and that's how we're able to even have that blocking. All these things have to come together for us to be able to witness an eclipse. And the moon's orbit actually changes on the order of meters, I, I think, once a year. And the, it, the distance between the Earth and the moon 
somewhere down the line in the future, not in our lifetime, will be such that we won't even have eclipses. Yeah, I mean, so, getting a little further all the time. So save the glasses. They might be worth something someday. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pull my back up. I'm going to look at the sun. It's pretty cool. Right? About oh, yeah. halfway, wouldn't you say? I, I, I think that's half. You know, yeah. I'm not a scientist, but... No, you're not. Based <laughs> on all those suns looking up there, Ken. We're having a lot of fun out here, as you can tell. We're Can't keeping tell. things down here at the St. Louis Science Center. We'll send them back to you guys. Yeah, listening to the scientist <laughs> talk reminds me of why we, we do this. Yes, yeah. Totally. All right, well, let's go back to our Steve Harris, live in French Village. We had a couple signal issues before. Now you're ready, Steve. The moon is wreaking havoc on it. Now, uh, there's a guy over here with a shofar. That's cool. Has one of those ram horn horns. Look, here, got a little performance art going on back here. You missed this young lady. Where are you from? I'm from Kansas. Kansas. What'd you come for? Came for the eclipse and the festival and to hang out with good friends. Oh, that's always a good thing. You saw the last one, yes? Um, I missed the last Ooh. one, so this is the first one. I'm very excited <laughs> this for. This will it. be good. And that yeah. kind of looks like a moon, or what the I ring know. of the sun I could look vibe like. Vibe with the eclipse, I think. I here. like yeah. that. Listen here. Here's the, you guys are from. Where are you from? Toledo, Ohio. Toledo, Ohio. What'd you come for? The festival and the eclipse of bonus. Have you seen the last one? No. You didn't, so this is going to be the first time for you guys. What are you so far? You kind of kind of getting a little dark, a little cool, yeah? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, we kind of knew what was coming, but but it's still really neat to see in person. And heard some good music last night? We did. We heard great music the last two days. Ricky, uh, well, it was uh, Ricky Skaggs. He sang Blue Moon of Kentucky. Well, this is the dark moon of Missouri, I guess, overhead, and people are having a real good time here. We'll be back here in just a little bit. You got a little eclipse and a show back there. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, Steve, sure. thank you. <laughs> Hey, here's another live look as totality continues. We are starting to see it get into the United States. This look is just outside of San Antonio. We understand there's quite a bit of uh, cloud cover down there. Yeah, but fun fact, my mom still lives there. I checked in with her. I wanted to know what it looked like at home. Um, and she stepped outside, took a couple pictures for me. She described it as it's dark just after sunset. Kerrville, right outside of San Antonio. It's a, it's like a suburb. Um, but she said the street light had just come on. So it's gotten huh. now dark enough where the street lights have clicked on, which is pretty cool to see. And now this look from Dallas, Texas, where yeah. clearly it is more clear. Those are our first spots in the U.S., yeah. by the way, that are getting totality as it continues to make its way all the way up through Maine. All right, let's get you a quick eclipse fact right here for you. Fun fact for you. During the total solar eclipse, the moon's shadow moves across the Earth at more than 1,000 miles per hour, faster than the speed of sound. That's why that totality lasts for just, just a blip. We'll continue to cover it for you. We'll be right back. Sometimes clouds tell a story. Could be a break in the storm or something more dangerous on the horizon. I see what's coming. It's important to me to get it right so you know first because weather can change everything. Your plans, your safety, your life. First Alert 4 Weather, we're putting you first every day. People ask me how I knew I wanted to be a part of the family furniture business. That's simple. It speaks to me. I earned my butterfly leaves in Ohio. I was built strong in Dublin, Georgia. Solid hickory. It's Miller Furniture's spring clearance sale. Save 40 to 75% on quality furniture and get 24 or 48 months free financing on mattresses. American-made, family-owned Miller Furniture. We're putting the family in furniture. Did we just get hustled? There's no way they were 70. Interesting. Hmm. It's both an electric and a gas car. Yep. Quite the paradox. Hmm. 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 So JJ's for lunch? Hmm. Electric for short trips, gas for long. It really is both. The Lexus RX plug-in hybrid. Get an 11% rebate on backyard storage. Now at Menards. Suncast resin storage sheds are easy to assemble and low maintenance. Get a Cloverdale 7x7 storage shed for $749.99 after rebate. Metal sheds from Aero Storage Products are strong and made to last. This 12x12 classic shed offers a tall roof for extra storage and headroom. Right now, just $899.99 after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. 
At the Fisher Law Firm, you are a top priority. If you have been injured on the job or in an accident, call us. Your story is important, so we sit down and listen to you. We get to know you and give you the personal attention you deserve. Then we work hard and win your case. We don't get paid until you get a settlement. When you call us, you will talk directly to a lawyer. Don't face the consequences of an accident alone. Call our family so we can help yours. Call now at 314-721-7111. Safe to say the St. Louis region is officially being eclipsed. We get to Matt Chambers in Carbondale, the lucky spot, getting it twice. Hey, Matt. Oh, boy, my gosh, guys. Such excitement building in the atmosphere here inside Saluki Stadium. And I'm joined by Corin Brevik, uh, Brevik, who is assistant professor of practice at the School of Physics and Applied uh, Physics as well. Thank you for joining us. Tell us the uh, significance of the image that's on the Jumbotron right now. Yeah, so you're seeing the partial phase of the eclipse that's coming. That is coming from one of our own telescopes right across the field. Literally on the 50-yard line, just on the other side of the football stadium here. Right there, and it's streaming live out, so anyone can tune into that. We're less than, oh, gosh, 20 minutes from totality right now. What do you hope people walk out of Saluki Stadium with that they didn't walk in with? I hope that everybody has that moment of personal awe, connectivity to the universe. It's a very personal moment, and I hope everybody has a chance to experience. Not exactly the jargon, guys, you're used to hearing from a physics professor, but obviously it's, it's a serious emotional moment for a lot of people. Back to you. Yeah, we're getting emotional here because we're taking a live look at Dallas, Texas, where they have reached totality. And again, we just saw that look down in Mexico, but you mm -hmm. see it for a second time. We're going to continue to see it as it moves through our area. Yeah. It is magical. It, it is. It's great. It gives and you chills. And every time we see it, as it moves a little bit closer to us, it gets us a little bit more excited. And Russellville, Arkansas, they're getting their partial eclipse. Incredible to see. Here is a closer look at the path over our area for totality. Listed below, you can see where we're going to have our crews or where we have our crews. At the time, they are expected to see peak darkness because St. Louis is not in totality. Some local schools have made the trip into the path mm -hmm. of totality. Yeah, Alexis Otos is with one of those schools right now in Perry County. Alexis, you talked to these kids a week or so ago, and they were really excited about it. How has that translated now day of they're getting to see it? Sam, Corey, well, first off, I want to just describe what we're feeling out here in Perry County. The temperature has significantly dropped. It is very noticeably getting darker. There are schools from actually all over. There's a big school group behind me from Memphis. The school group that we came down with is just over here from St. Charles. But we want to put our lens on and let you see what we're seeing real quick. Going to have our photographer Chuck put that lens on and show you. We are getting so close mm -hmm. here in Perry County. You can really feel it. You can feel the excitement in the air. We've got beautiful weather here in Perry County, and this is something that these students are going to get to experience. They're here with their astronomy class. Take a listen to what their teacher said about why she wanted to bring them down here. We're really grateful. I mean, not everyone is able to um, to make the trip, you know, for one reason or another. And um, yeah, we're just grateful to be here. I gave kind of a different energy to the semester, knowing that this trip was coming up and the stuff we were talking about in class, we were actually going to be able to see happen. So we're here with uh, 11th and 12th grade students from the Lutheran High School, St. Charles School. We drove down with them, hit a bit of traffic, but they are all very excited to get to really experience this real life science experience. And we are so close to totality. We're going to chat with them and watch them experience it all together. We'll send it back to you guys. Looking forward to it, Alexis. I want to ask you real quick before we let you go, as you're getting a little bit closer to that uh, clip of totality, have you noticed that the temperatures come down? What's the lighting like? How are people reacting to just the overall environment and the way that it's changing? Absolutely. So the temperature has significantly dropped. It is not quite dusk. It's actually like a very strange color out right now. <laughs> but you can hear some of the families and the kids behind me saying like, oh, wow, look up at like feel that temperature drop. I can remember still so vividly what it all felt like to experience it in 2017. And I'm excited to get to watch a lot of these kids experience it. The 11th and 12th graders, they were in sixth grade. They said eh, they didn't really care about it as much then. <laughs> now 
they're very excited to witness it, and especially they get to see four minutes of it. More of an appreciation. No Absolutely, doubt. yeah. Uh, Alexis, thank you. We want to check in with one of our crews over in Illinois. Nathan Vickers joins us from Chester, Illinois, where they've been preparing for this day for years. Nathan? They really have. Chester has it twice in a lifetime. They had it back in 2017. They have it again today. And it's starting to feel really eerie around here. The light is definitely changing. People are starting to look up to the skies. In fact, if you look back here, these are all city employees and people who have been preparing for this a long time. They all have their glasses on and they're looking up at the skies for that big moment. Now here, it's, there's been music all day. There's been a lot of festivity. They actually asked that people start to turn down their music and that vendors stop serving food because they want people to listen and absorb. They want people to feel what we're all feeling here, people who are getting chills. Now, there are a lot of people out here with, with cameras. We've seen some kids blowing uh, bubbles, but there's also uh, some, some neat experimentation going on. I think Russell alluded to this earlier, but this is the perfect time to show you this. My, my wife is a teacher, so she's doing this activity with her kids today. If you have a, a hole punch or a colander or something like that, you can actually see this interesting phenomenon where the holes actually start to act as a pinhole camera and you get these cool crescent shadows that are, are forming as the uh, moon and the sun converge. And th that was kind of my prototype here, but I also wanted to show you this one. I thought, well, we'll just uh, get kind of fancy here with the channel four. Uh, uh, so we'll see what happens with <laughs> well that number done. four as we go up. <laughs> there you go. Cool. So yeah, that, that, that's a pretty good look there. That's incredible. There's so many different so, ways yeah, for people to be able to the, see this eclipse too, Nathan, whether it's the glasses, the, the arts and crafts stuff they're able to put together. And we've shown people a couple of different ways that they can do that. Really awesome for you to show that live for us as the eclipse is eclipsing. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, a lot of ways to connect to it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's part of the fun. We're learning so much today. We are. All right, Nathan, <laughs> thank you. Let's give you a live look at Poplar Bluff, Missouri, the first uh, area in our state in, in Missouri to see totality. We are less than 10 minutes away that chills. You just, from you just totality. That. You can see the countdown there, eight minutes and 17 seconds when we are to see totality in Poplar Bluff. All right, we're gonna continue our live team coverage now. We're still on the other side of the river in Illinois, headed now to Jefferson County, about 77 miles east of downtown St. Louis in Illinois. Justin Andrews there as we are nearing totality on that side of the river. Hey, Justin. up here looking at uh, we're approaching that moment of totality here in Mount Vernon. We're at Cedarhurst Center for Arts and look at all of these people just looking at this moment that eclipse happening that uh, eclipse happening. They have their glasses on. They're waving out here. If you can notice the sun is kind of slightly disappearing. It's getting a little more quiet out here. People are just taking in this moment. I want to point you to this video that we shot a little bit earlier ago as uh, it was eclipsing. happening. All eyes were right in the skies, capturing this moment right here as we're inching closer to that two o'clock time of totality here in Mount Vernon. But before that, we also shot some video of pets and parents and the kiddos really gathered out here for such a sight like this, putting their eclipse glasses on just for this eclipsing moment. I got to catch up with the family from Chicago and they pretty much took their kids out of school today. They also did that seven years ago back in 2017. But when it comes to this site, even the adults, myself included, we waited seven years for this. Take a listen to this guy we talked to a couple minutes ago. Like the last time, it's just it was the biggest sense of awe I've ever had, like as as an adult. Just sort of like the I wasn't prepared for it. The fact that you know the the atmosphere changes and the light changes and you like, kind of feel it in your whole body it was really a cool experience. So. All right, look, look, they're waving, they're waving. Yes, this is such a moment for them and so many other people out here. But I want to introduce you all to someone else right here. She came all the way from Chicago. I want you to tell me what is going through your mind right now. You just took a look at this partial eclipse. Tell me about it. 
So I haven't seen the total eclipse ever. The last one in 2017, I didn't travel out of my way to go see it. So this one I'm very excited for. Um, I'm really obsessed with like planetary science. And so I'm, I'm just excited to be able to experience it, especially since it's one of the more longer eclipses, yeah. like four minutes or something. And you've got the perfect place here at Cedarhurst, yeah, right? It's perfect. Yeah, the sky is clear. There's no trees blocking it. It's perfect. Amazing. Yeah. Yes, it is perfect. And we're going to stay out here and make sure our eyes can see this partial eclipse. Again, we're just minutes away from that totality moment here in Mount Vernon. Back over to you. All right, Justin, thank you. And here on First Alert 4, we're giving you continuous updates on where we stand with this 2024 eclipse. So this is in Arkansas right now, just northwest of Little Rock. As you can see, yes, they are nearing totality there. Yeah, that portion of Northwest Little Rock, not too far going to be from Northwest Arkansas, which is not going to be too far from that first city in Missouri that is going to see the total eclipse of Poplar Bluff. We'll check in with our Caroline Hecker here in just a bit, uh, but we do want to continue checking in with our crews. Let's get to first alert meteorologist Ken Earhart and David Amelotti, who are over at the Science Center there in Forest Park, getting ready with all of the sciencey pieces of this <laughs> 2024 eclipse. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hey, it's well, good to see you. It is, and I'll tell you the sciencey part of what we're going through right now is we've turned off the TV lights, which we had on all the time uh, previous, and there is a marked difference oh my gosh. in the amount of yes. light. It feels like right now, like we're in the evening, yes. I, I would describe it. It definitely feels cooler. There's a breeze. We're not going to be able to hear any difference in the birds because we're right up next to Highway right. 40. But I'll tell you something, and I found this interesting, and maybe we can chime in, uh, meteorologist uh, Steve Temple can chime in on this. The forecast high today that was modeled was about 80 degrees. Mm -hmm. Well, the best part of the heating of the day is when we're getting this eclipse. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're gonna hit that 80 degrees. I wonder if that's to blame, huh? Well, I just can't believe how noticeably cooler it is because of the breeze that you mentioned. And we were talking about uh, leading up to this moment that we didn't think that we would feel a substantial difference. There's not a lot of clouds in the sky right now, but there isn't a whole lot of sun right now in the sky either. Yeah, it's amazing how much with the coverage we've got right now, how much less radiant heat is on us from the sun. Yeah. None of that infrared is hitting my right. skin right now, and I feel yeah. quite cool. And how would you guys describe the light right now? Because I don't even feel like I'm outside. Right, It feels like there's it's this like artificial muted. light. Yeah. It feels like muted, uh, flore yeah, fluorescent lighting mm -hmm. maybe, something like that. Um, and the breeze is a little bit cooler, and it's really quite pleasant. And when you realize what's going on, it's, it's pretty chilling. It really is. Well, and there's less sun, like we mentioned, but there's more people showing up. If we can pan real quickly yeah. behind us, you can see all the people. There's that probably a hundred people here. or so that are hanging out with us behind oh, the yeah. planetarium. We talked with one person who said they woke up at 8:30 this morning. They said, that, "Well, we have nothing better to do, so we're gonna go out to Forest Park and we're gonna watch the eclipse." Yeah, might as well see a once-in-a-lifetime event. So. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. It absolutely. Really is. So yeah, we're uh, we're enjoying the climate right now. It's a nice, cool day to sit out here in Forest Park and enjoy the show, the free show overhead. And uh, we're just waiting now. We're going to start to pick up the, uh, uh, our reporters down to the south and east of us that are in totality. And uh, any moment now, they're going to be there. As we can see, that there's just pretty much just a little sliver left as we look up there. So you back to you, and let's, let's talk totality. <laughs> All let's right. talk totality. And, and meteorologist, our Chief Meteorologist Steve Templeton just told us that where you guys are, the temperature has dropped four degrees. So that's the update on the temp wow, there wow. at the uh, St. Louis Science Center. There's not a whole lot of that. Gentlemen, left. thank you. Well, let's take a live look. This is from the NASA feed, Russellville, Arkansas. There's totality. There it is. Again, giving us all of those chills and thrills that we've been leading up to to this day. We've been talking about it for months and months and months. <laughs> and this is exactly what our area is about to experience. And we're just really, really excited about it. And yes, the buildup is here. The 2024 eclipse just moments away from totality. And we want to get to where it's all going to begin, where it's all going to start down in Poplar mm. Bluff. And that's where we find Caroline Hecker for us this afternoon. Hey, hey Caroline. Hey guys, we are in these final moments leading up to totality here in Poplar Bluff. The crowd is starting to get very quiet. Everybody has their eyes on the sky. Still have a minute or so before totality here. The lighting is getting very weird and ominous like we've talked about. It's getting chillier. I'm going to step out of the way. I want my photographer to put the lens uh, filter that we have on our camera on that. Give us just a moment. We are going to pan up and find the sun or what's left of it in the sky, you can see mm. we are almost to total solar eclipse. Wow. We want to give you a listen to the crowd as everyone gets quiet here. 
And Caroline, that's really part of it is listening to the oohs and ahs and just the crowd react. And I, you got a lot of people there that I'm sure are going to be reacting to that. Absolutely. We are almost there. You can kind of see it even in the middle of the screen, the way that it's, that little crescent is getting shorter and shorter. Mm -hmm. It's getting much darker, guys, much darker, almost immediately. Here we go. As we have about 30 seconds to, until totality, Caroline, talk about the temperature drop real quick. Oh my gosh, guys, I took my sweater off earlier because I was sweating. Now I'm chilly. The wind has slowed considerably. People are cheering. Let's take a listen. <laughs> I just love the audio track from the crowd. I have chills, Hearing the cheers, guys. it's great. Wow. <laughs> I'm joined by Kurt right now in Chesterfield. Continue to take a look. What do you think? It's the best. The chill, then the darkness, and then you can look at it. It's better than 2017 and awesome. Absolutely incredible. It is, it truly is. I'll be 82 for the next one, so <laughs> <laughs> hope I'm here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, well, let's go live to Farmington where Russell Kinsaw is. I know he is moments from totality. Russell, how are things looking there? Oh my gosh within the last couple of seconds, it's gotten noticeably darker here. The temperature is getting cool. It is incredible. The Just the level of excitement here is unbelievable. Let me look up now and take a look. It is almost a total eclipse. Let's go ahead and put the lens on. We're gonna point up there. It hits at 158.15. That is about 30, 30 seconds. seconds from now. But the temperature change is very noticeable. It's getting darker and darker. You know, one of the incredible things about that I've learned from scientists about the total eclipse is that no other planet in our solar system, in our galaxy, has a total eclipse like this because the sun and the earth and the moon are lined up perfectly. Take a listen. We did it, totality. <laughs> That's called daylight darkness. We're in totality, and I would say it's about as dark as it is at 6 a.m. in the morning. Hmm. Sunrise is at 6.30. It's about what it is that I saw this morning at 6 a.m. That's how dark it is out here. The crowd is still cheering and ooing and awing. It's an unbelievable sight. All right, that's it from here in Farmington. Let's go to Alexis Zotos. Oh, no, Matt uh, Chambers. Matt, it's up to you. Give us the call. I got you, Russell. My goodness, if you've ever wondered what 13,000 people cheering for an eclipse in unison sound like? Listen to this. Exactly 20 seconds to go to totality in Carbondale, Illinois. Less than a thumbnail left of that sun. Here we go. Totality. Here's a first alert I never thought I'd give. We have reached totality in Carbondale, Illinois. Unbelievable. The filter is now off the camera. Adam Randall working magic with the tripod mm. and focus and white balance. As we show you at the moment, the moon perfectly centered in front of the sun. So what you're seeing around the periphery of the moon now is what we call the corona. Just as Earth has an atmosphere, so does the sun. Typically, because of the brightness of the sun, you can't even come close to seeing it. Right now, in Saluki Stadium, 13,000 people are seeing it in a way they never have before. 
and probably never will again. By the way, stars and planets are coming out. It is 360 degrees of dusk right now. It is a surreal scene. The only light I can see illuminating anything inside Saluki Stadium right now are the faces of people's cell phones hmm. looking back at them as they try to get a shot of what is, in the case of Carbondale, a twice-in-a-lifetime sight. And I'll tell you, as a guy that was standing almost in this exact spot seven years ago today, that was nothing compared to this. We had clouds obscuring the view, nothing but a few high, thin, cirrus clouds. Guys, I thought 2017 was impactful. This is incredible. It's just incredible. I wish I could tell you I could inhale right now, but I don't think there's an <laughs> oxygen molecule left inside this arena because the air has been sucked out as people just, I don't know, I'm looking around and I think they're trying to find ways to express themselves and it's difficult. Your brain is literally processing something that for most of us, you've never experienced before. Yeah, Matt, when that, that moment incredible. of totality was reached, it sounded like the Salukis just scored a game-winning touchdown. I mean, just the roar there and just uh, <laughs> very, very exciting there yeah. in Carbondale. It's a good way to put it. I think the decibel meter may have climbed even higher than that, believe it or not, with these 13,000 folks gathered here. And you just talked about really it. Really remarkable. Compares, uh, in comparison. Obviously, we talk, about the, we talk about wildlife sounds. In an arena setting like this, it's, it's just too loud. There's too much ambient noise to detect that. But uh, my photographer, Adam, and I did notice some interesting bird activity before we came through. Oh, yeah, and Adam's pointing at the viewfinder right now. Let me take a look. Almost looks like maybe, um, so you're seeing two things. As I mentioned, the corona of the sun. But you see little brighter spots here and there. Um, you also see kind of some arcs and little plasma ejections coming from the sun. I, I, I'm seeing one kind of at, if you will, six o'clock down at the bottom of the sun. Part of that also is the moon. Again, four minutes and nine seconds of complete totality here. Part of it is the moon now beginning to migrate, as you see it on your television screen, up and to the left. So very soon you may see kind of that secondary wedding ring image where suddenly there's a lot of brightness in the lower right hand corner of your screen but my gosh guys i don't words fail in a moment like this they really do it, it is the sun is directly above us and yet we're in complete darkness wow. never experienced anything like that before really remarkable you summarize it pretty well matt for sure we want to get back to poplar bluff where uh, the temperature has definitely dropped they had totality the sun's kind of coming back out there caroline give us an update from there If you can hear us through all the uh, noise of the crowd. That's okay. We, we're okay to just look at the crowd that's having a great time watching the eclipse. It's and, incredible. And while totality was happening, Caroline got to talk with a gentleman from Chesterfield who traveled down in Poplar Bluff. And, you know, he just described just kind of that magical moment. And you can see that because uh, obviously the partial eclipse is, is still happening down there in Poplar Bluff. But things have gotten brighter. Uh, Chief Meteorologist uh, Steve Templeton told us throughout the area as the, the solar eclipse happens, temperatures are dropping in areas yeah. between 4 and 10 degrees. So mm -hmm. we're experiencing or our crews are experiencing that, that dip. Definitely going to be able to notice that difference. Let's check in with our Alexis Sotos now. Alexis, tell us how it is where you are. Uh, Sam, Corey, so the sun is coming back out. Honestly, that felt like the fastest four minutes. I'm here <laughs> with Paige and Emma. They are seniors. Uh, what was that like? It was surreal. The sun, it was a 360 sunset. So if you could just take your eyes off the eclipse for a second, you could see all around you. There was 360 sunset. I didn't think about it like that, but that is true. It was beautiful. What was that like? Much different than sixth grade? I, th I <laughs> yeah. like when we have, we have our glasses, right? And I'm over here squealing with Emma. Emma, there's like a crescent left. And um, we all started like, you could tell everyone got really excited when they could see it starting to get smaller. And I was like, my sixth grade self did not appreciate this. No. I, w I went outside as sixth grade Bill. I was like, this is cool. And then I went back inside like nothing happened. That was a surreal experience. And the fact that I got to like enjoy that in such a beautiful area as well. Like she was talking about the 360 sunset. Um, I feel like everyone is so focused on the eclipse. Cool part. 
But if you looked around, it was like 360 sunset. The bugs were going crazy. The birds were like going insane. And so was I, honestly. I was going insane. <laughs> we were holding like squeezing each other's hands, like, oh my gosh! And we were, we were freaking out. Like, when we realized the sunset, I was like, take a picture, take a picture! And I'm like, I can't find my phone! So it was almost like an exhilarating, like, adrenaline experience. And it was so fun. Appreciative that you guys were able to make this trip down here to totality. Oh my yeah. gosh, yes. Oh my gosh. I feel like, I feel like getting it, I know my sister and other people back at our, our high school are enjoying it slightly outside, but with all that light pollution and stuff, I feel like you couldn't enjoy it as much as down here. So I'm actually so glad I took this class. <laughs> so like, um, and then I heard people saying like, science is my new favorite subject. Thanks, Moon. Oh. And it was just really- That's what science teachers are probably mm -hmm. dreaming. I, yeah. Your teacher, I hope back there is just blushing. Like I said, we came down here with these students from St. Charles. They got to experience it. There's other students from Memphis that have come down here. You can see the sun is starting to come out, but it still feels very strange. Like it's a weird light. Um, it is also funny, I should mention, fireworks have been going off down here. <laughs> um, I guess we're setting those off as it got dark. Um, but really cool to watch these kids experience it. This is an astronomy class, so they are, they're into science. And this was cool to watch them really witness that ultimate science moment if you will so thanks girl <laughs> did you realize uh i don't know if you saw but like sun flares coming off of the sun yep. it was so cool i wish i had a better camera with me <laughs> because that was actually so gorgeous but it was one of those things where i feel like i'm i'm a teenager i like my phone <laughs> but in that moment i like I had a, a video recording of like when it darkened and we were freaking out and I just put my phone down for a second and it was just an just amazing experience. experience. That's what everyone really gets to do. So we know we have a lot of experiences going on across the area. We'll send it back to you guys. Yeah, Alexis, while we have you, I mean, obviously you were with us in 2017. How did this compare personally for you just to experience this moment and uh, in totality? Oh, my knees. Oh, <laughs> you know, uh, my knees are a little we uh, worse off uh, five years later. This was pretty cool. I got to experience 2017 with my family. I was lucky to not be working in that moment. Uh, for some reason that day, I was off. But it was a cool th thing to experience it with my family. But it was so quick and so fast. Getting to experience four minutes of totality here today was a much different mm -hmm. experience. I will still say that was the fastest four minutes ever, uh, trying to take it all in, taking the kids' experience, taking, as they just mentioned, that sort of 365 degree sunset that was happening, the bugs the moment, just trying to appreciate it with Chuck, our photographer that's here, and capture all those moments so that we can share them back with our News 4 viewers. Like we said, lots of folks that have come down here from the St. Louis area, Memphis, Arkansas, talked to a lot of people that have made this trip. So it's fun to be able to share what we're experiencing with our viewers back in St. Louis. No doubt, Alexis, thank you. Uh, we want to get back to our crews across the bi-state. That includes crews that we have in Illinois. Nathan Vickers joining us from Chester, Illinois. Uh, Nathan, give us an update there. Well, totality was absolutely beautiful. I was standing right here when the, the moon and the sun converged. And what impacted me the most was, was kind of feeling that sweep of light just sort of vanishing, where it was sort of eerie and, and fading, 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 and then all at once it just whoosh and then silence. And it was an absolutely magical moment here in Chester. If you look around, people are kind of uh, uh, getting the tension out a little bit. They're back to playing games. I saw some children back there. They were playing Ring Around the Rosie. There are still people out taking some, some photos, as you can see here. But everyone is just sort of relaxing, taking a deep breath after that, that moment, because there's almost a tension to it that, that builds and builds and builds and builds. And then you feel that relief. And I think that's what, what everyone is feeling here. And, and maybe everyone along the path of totality is feeling after that, that moment um, of, of the, the moon and the sun converging like that. It was just a spectacular thing mm -hmm. to witness here in Chester. And you have some wooded area behind you, Nathan. As far as in it, hearing any kind of wildlife during totality, obviously, did, did you hear any kind of sounds? I mean, I, the roar of the crowd, probably yeah. you, you heard that. But was there anything uh, from wildlife as, as the darkness set in? 
I'm glad you asked that because once the applause sort of died down, you could sort of hear the birds chirping and, and nature going like, oh, what's going on? And, and that was a really impactful part of it too. Um, you know, it does, it, there's a chill in the air and there's the, the animals uh, talking in the forest and, and uh, that's sort of all you're hearing right now because everyone's just in awe and, and the crowd is silent, but nature all around you is very active. <laughs> Well, when you think about it, and we knew the eclipse was coming, do you think that nature knew it was coming? The birds are probably <laughs> very confused about why it's dark no in doubt. the middle of the day. Good stuff. Really glad that you're there in Chester for us, Nathan. Well, another area of uh, the by state that experienced total totality recently, French Village, uh, another big festival has been happening there throughout the day. Yeah, Steve Harris is live for us in French Village to bring us uh, the wrap on what totality looked like for the crowd that he's been hanging out with all day. I'm sure it was a good one there, Steve. Oh, had you had you, you had to be here. They had to be here. Am I right? Yeah. They had to be here. There was what there was like violins and drums and a didgeridoo. Somebody had a didgeridoo, and then yeah, they were yelling. They were howling, howling. Woo, you know, howling. Take a look. This is like what it looked like right as we hit totality. You could actually take your glass off just for a second and see it, and it looked like a little ring. And then of course it went away. It was just everybody was so excited. And I have a couple little girls here, and they are eight years old apiece, and they came down. What is your name? Moira. Moira. So what did you think of the eclipse? It was awesome. Is this the first one you've seen? Yes. Very, very cool. And what about, what's your name? Kennedy. Kennedy. What did you think? It was awesome. Very, very cool. And seeing all the people just having a good time, that was fun too, yeah? Yes. Very, very cool. That's kind of what was going on out here. Well, here I happen to have my thing, Mom, Dad out here. Let me I'll just say really quick since you guys are here, what did you think? It was a good time. Good yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Had you yeah. seen one before? No, no. This is our first one. It was awesome. And with the music and the dancing, that just yeah. kind of added to yeah, it. It, did. Right? it did. Yeah, good time. I had joined in. Great here. But I have bad new knees, so I can't. I can't. I don't think it would work. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. That's what's going on down here in French Village. Had a really good time down here. It's kind of coming back, but the party's still going on down here. Yeah, I was going to say everybody looks here. like they're still having Wish a great time. Here. All right, Steve. Still. Is there any more music that's happening this afternoon since you're at, at the festival? Yes, well, that's what they're doing up there. It's like, I, like the, I guess they call it ancient instruments, like old instruments, okay. you know, like stuff you don't like play anymore, I guess. Oh. You can come down and play the drums, Corey. They have a drum. I know you're a drummer. <laughs> I am, hey, you're a drummer, too, so yeah. you're a lot closer to doing that. Yeah. Than, mm -hmm. <laughs> I am. All right, uh, Steve, thank you. We're going to continue our coverage again over in, uh, this time over in Illinois, where our Justin Andrews has been hanging out, tracking the preparations here. and just that big moment that's already passed through uh, Mount Vernon. What was that like, Justin? Yeah, Corey, I feel like you all are throwing shade over here at Mount Vernon because we missed that moment of totality oh, live on the air here. But guess what? Uh, These ladies, they saw it, right? You all saw that, right? What was that moment like? All of you all had those glasses on. What was that like? It was so cool. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was like, it was so pretty. I can't think of words. Um, yeah. What, what it, about you? <laughs> it was probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Like. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. It was so cool. It was like it was like, it was like dark, and we could see and like it was planets, like a ring and you could like yeah. see like planets. Like, yeah. the two it was planets still right so there. bright. It was really, it was really so cool. bright, so dark. It got cool, right? Yeah. You could feel the wind. It was just certainly a moment. People were just. It was silent. Everyone was just in awe at that moment. These guys also heard it. They wanted to be on TV. They're like, <laughs> "Can I be on TV?" So tell me what that moment was like for you. It was very dark. Yeah. It was more like. The moon going in front of the sun. Yeah. Yep. Did you all notice the lights out here at Cedarhurst? Come on. Yeah. Yep. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's what, two something in the afternoon and it looks pitch black on Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where are you all from? I'm uh, from Chicago. I'm from Missouri, St. Okay. Louis. Thank you all are from all St. over. Louis. Yeah. I'm what was this moment like for you and your family? I'm sure you're out here. Because um, dark. <laughs> dark? Yep. That's the best way to describe it, right? Yep. Yeah, this was certainly a moment out here at Cedarhurst. So many people uh, were just excited, left in awe. It was quiet. It was cool. The lights came on, and this area was in complete totality at that moment. It was certainly a sight to see. Obviously, we have several cameras. If we could pan to that camera over there, partner. Yeah, we've got two cameras out here because we've got <laughs> one looking at the eclipse, and then obviously myself because my photographer, Brian Potner, he's got to capture this too and capture me as well so I can give you all the sights and sounds of this. You, what'd you say, partner? I missed it all. 
He said he missed it all, but guess what? We got to go back and edit so we get to see this. Work in the equipment. No, that's so great. And uh, Justin, I think it's so cool that you get to be out there with people who are experiencing this. And I know the kid that you talked to, he had a shirt on that said twice in a lifetime. Yeah. And for a few of us, it is twice in a lifetime. For many of us, it will just be once in a lifetime. But to be able to experience that once in a lifetime event with people, they'll remember it for the rest of their lives. It's an awesome, positive event, yes. too, to know that they'll carry with them forever is, is pretty cool. That's awesome it's for you. Yeah, it certainly is. It's one of those things, too. I was talking to a family earlier, and they took their kids out of school seven years ago. Yeah. Well, this is the first time that they're going to remember. They were really mm -hmm. little, so this is their first experience of the eclipse mm -hmm. that they'll be able to remember. So I'm going to try to go talk to them after this to get their reaction. This is the first time, like you said, Sam, certainly a moment for all of us to see, but especially the kiddos here. All right, good update. As Justin's got a smile, people yeah. in the crowd got a smile as they saw good totality job. there in Mount Vernon. <laughs> All right, our, can, uh, our coverage of Eclipse 2024 continues after the break. Stick around. In St. Louis, weather can change in an instant. That's why you need a team that's always ready. First to alert you to changes before you start your day. And first to alert you what's coming tomorrow. The early first alert on this. Lots to get you caught up on this morning. So let me give you the breakdown about what we're seeing. So here's the newest timing. And when weather takes a turn for the worse. Threatening weather that could move in. Tomorrow is a first alert weather day. You'll be the first to know with first alert weather. First alert for weather. Always ready. It's like playing a video game, but in real life. Yes! When we bring a truckload of magic to your house, that magic is yours to keep. Big open rooms without clutter and that feeling of fresh air freedom. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Dear unbreakable spirit, when the terrain is gnarly, you steady us. When obstacles are ahead, you lift us. When the turf is hostile, you inspire us. Own a legend. Toyota Trucks. Toyota has the best resale value of all brands according to Kelly Blue Books KBB.com. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. The perfectly melted cheese, the juicier patty, the golden bun, it's all here. Bravo, bravo. Well, it was a second ago. Try a delicious and melty triple cheeseburger today for just $2.99. Mosby. Does your siding make you want to hide? Call the tried and true Mosby Blue. Count on Mosby to be your guide. Call the tried and true Mosby Blue. Our team is fast and qualified. Call the tried and true Mosby Blue. Once we're done, you'll be satisfied. Call the tried and true Mosby Blue. Mosby Building Arts. We do siding. Protect your family from mold and mildew. Cracked or bowing basement walls, water in your basement, Cornerstone Structural Repair and Waterproofing uses structural repairs to the foundation to keep the value of your home. Call or click to schedule an appointment today. It's like playing a video game, but in real life. Yes! When we bring a truckload of magic to your house, that magic is yours to keep. Big open rooms without clutter and that feeling of fresh air freedom. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Here is a live picture of Totality. It's now moved out of our viewing area. This is in Ohio. Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio. And now NASA's going to show us it looks like what uh, I don't know what that is. We are now at the mercy, we should again say, of NASA's cameras at this point. So you are watching this live with us as NASA is clicking through all of the different views that they have of totality of this eclipse. Pretty cool that we're able to get this view, though, of all of those different options. Yeah, we're just trying to keep up. This right. is uh, from New York. Uh, here is a look at the path of totality again over the United States. I guess we, we don't have that look right now, but it. Uh, we want to get back to our crew here in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So St. Louis, of course, 99% totality. Let's uh, go ahead and send it over to Kent Earhart and David Emilotti. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, good to can see you. Check you. back a little later. We're watching the eclipse. You know, someone told me the camera was actually looking that way earlier. <laughs> I I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something that really That's struck we're me, and that was the temperature we drop. Right? That's right? probably yeah. the most yeah. profound thing. Yeah. And then. Uh, I don't know who pointed it out. Was it you that said, look at the lights popping on on the cars yeah. on the highway? A lot of the more modern cars and the near newer cars. 
have automatic lights that pop on when it gets dark and all their headlights were popping on. Traffic had that, traffic was lighter. We also talked about maybe we think why it was so jarring when we had Maximo is because the shadows are not where they're supposed to be because that sun is directly above. Right. You would think for, it felt like- Psychologically it you, you, Yeah, you thought it'd be moving. And, and all the shadows kind of looked a little bit more curved. I mean, it was funny looking up, you, you're looking around, you'd say, oh, it looks dark, it looks almost like night, mm -hmm. but you've got that, that bright point of light in the sky, and even though it's quite a bit darker than normal, it's still so much brighter relatively than everything else. It just, nothing seemed to work right. Well, we heard Nathan mention that he heard the birds chirping where he's at. We didn't hear that too, but you noticed the insects were coming out of the ground thinking that it was morning. Yeah, and they're all gone again, which is <laughs> lucky for us, but yeah. yeah, it's amazing how animal behavior can change so much mm -hmm. just because of this one little interruption. I want to ask real quick, and then we're gonna, we've got some folks here that we'd like to chat with, but Tell us, I know so much focus is on the planetarium and the Science Center in an event like this, but of course that programming goes on year round and there's lots of good stuff coming up in the Science Center. Yeah, we're so lucky to have our planetarium here and our star projector can show you the entire night sky. So you can see where the constellations are gonna be. We have different programming to talk to you about the movement of the planets and the different stars. Uh, we've also got everything about uh, the moon so you can see the phases that normally right. occur. That's real awesome. quick, come over here real quick. Got a lovely couple here, what's your name? Terry. Bill. Cool. And they, what'd you tell us real quick? Did you enjoy it? Oh my gosh, what an experience. Yeah, thank you. All right, back to you. All right, Kent, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, just a, an incredible moment. Uh, yeah. for, and it was so cool to be able to see how the total eclipse progressed from you know, Poplar Bluff uh, down to we French watched Village. We NASA from yeah. Mexico. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. We, we caught that one, one early. It was it was awesome yeah, to see. Good stuff. All right. Well, it has been just really incredible to take in the big moment as totality has now passed. Some of our crews, we want to check back in with them now. How about we take you now to Perry County, our Alexis Sotos there. I see your students are leaving behind you. You got to say goodbye to them and experience that big moment with them today. How was it? It was really incredible. Yeah, they are all getting back on their bus and their vans to head back <laughs> to St. Charles County. They've got to get, of course, hopefully back in time to get picked up for the end of the school day. But it was really cool to watch this eclipse with them. These are students who saw the 2017 one when they were about fifth and sixth grade. Now they are 11th and 12th graders. This is their astronomy class. So they're into science. And this, they said, was just the ultimate experience. We've got that moment that it hit totality here. Let's take a listen. All right, so yeah, it was really an amazing moment. As we've all mentioned, you know, that temperature dropped. Everyone was looking up at the sky and you could just hear that cheering around us. I talked to two of the seniors right after that totality and they just said, you know, it was a moment that they were glad they could just put their cell phones down and just experience this with their friends and their classmates, which, you know, if you know teenagers, they don't want to put their phones down a lot. <laughs> right. So it was really fun to watch them watch it for ourselves. I mean, I tried to take a moment to say to my photographer, Chuck, like, hey, let's pause for ourselves Absolutely. and just look up and witness this because it's really just an amazing moment that we're grateful that we got to experience here in Perry County. We'll send it back to you guys. Yeah, as much of it is, as much as it has been a once in a lifetime, or if you're in Carbondale, twice in a lifetime yeah. event, it is equally just a once in a lifetime event for us too and our crews who are out there getting to experience it and uh, document it for us as well. Very incredible. Yeah, and Alexis, uh, you talked earlier with two high schoolers that were down there, and they were just really appreciative, and they could even compare to back in 2017 when they, I think they said they were in sixth grade where they didn't really appreciate it, and it was kind of neat for them to explain how much more now that they kind of understand and they're appreciative of, of what really uh, nature has brought to us today. Absolutely. And just talking to their teacher right now, she said all of the planning that went into making this pretty epic field trip happen, the drive down here, which, you know, was on some windy roads. She said there was a little bit of car sickness happening uh, in the school van. She said all of that was worth it to watch those students look up at the sky and just see something that goes beyond science and math and space and really just take that moment in. 
uh, it, it is just, it gives you chills to think about, and it gave me chills to, to watch what's happening up in the sky. So grateful that, again, they got to come down here and experience it and that they let us sort of tag along and, mm. and watch them mm -hmm. experience this scientific phenomenon. Very incredible. All right, Alexis, thank you. Let's get you another look at the totality that's moving on now from our area. We are going to take a look. We've got that NASA look. Here we go. This is in Tupper Lake, New York. Want to remind you that the end of this path of totality in North America is in part of Maine, meaning if we're in New York now, we're getting pretty close there to the end. And once again, uh, I've said it, I kind of feel like a broken record a little bit, but as we've seen this from Mexico, mm -hmm through Texas, mm -hmm. through Arkansas, through our area, what we've seen totality in different views a dozen times, At a least, little bit yeah. less, yeah. It, it, but every single time, it just kind of takes your breath away and every really kind of lets you pause mm -hmm. and appreciate what is happening. I mean, we won't see uh, another one 2044 in the yeah, United States and then years. beyond that. I mean, so th it is just something that we all should really just, again, take and, and, and pause and uh, as we see that, you know, corona of the sun, it's really cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. And then to be able to be with the people, and I mentioned this early, as they're experiencing a once in a lifetime event. And to know that in that moment, they're taking that moment, just like you are, and they will remember it 50 years down the road when I tell their children and grandchildren about it. And we're talking about millions of people now who have the ability to do that because they've either lived in the path of totality, which you're looking at now, or many people that traveled there to see that 100% totality along that path. It'll end here just about 2.30. It'll be over Caribou, Maine, as I mentioned, and then it continues to move its way on up into Canada. But yeah, you just mentioned it, 30 million people mm -hmm. across the United States in totality for this 2024 eclipse event. Magical. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, nope. another incredible total solar eclipse over parts of our area. So glad that you could be with us to join us for this live coverage. And you can expect more coverage today as well as our eclipse special. That's good. Always be first. Go to firstalert4.com for more news anytime. Once in a lifetime, again. It's the day we have been waiting for for so long. Today is the day the Great American Eclipse. Great American Eclipse. It's a big old Monday. It's going to be pretty incredible to experience this now for a second time. Yeah, I have to catch myself when I say once in a lifetime, oh, twice in a lifetime opportunity. The conditions are ideal. Sun's up there, by the way. <laughs> Dad, is this going to be her first eclipse? It is, yes. And she <laughs> She's how excited she is about it. You can't see anything. Yeah. No good. Those are fancy. You like that? I think they might be getting even more people than they originally bargained for. And people are coming in from not only all over the U.S., but really the entire world. So you take advantage of these kinds of moments. It is so beautiful. It's, it's unlike anything else that you'll, you'll see. And so just to see that through the eyes. This is really going to impact a lot of families. As